Hello everyone, I'm back. I took a little siesta from making videos. There really wasn't a lot to make videos about as far as new products, traditional reviews, and I oftentimes don't look for reasons to create videos. But this video is kind of a viewer requested sort of thing, and it's where we're going to take a look and see what weight difference, you know, in micros, I'm oftentimes talking about weight, and I am a little bit of a weight snob, not to an extreme. Uh, I always feel like when I go to extremes that I compromise the repairability or the durability of micros. So I like to keep the weight low so I get a certain sort of flight feel. Now, you might want something that's a little bit heavier. There's nothing wrong with that. We all enjoy different sorts of flight. But I wanted to take a minute. I've got uh, two of my favorite quads. are actually the same sort of quad, just different builds. These are the uh, Rocket Race, the 2S editions from Jax 3D Printing. And I will link them down in the video description. Uh, the components that I've got on these are slightly different. Uh, I call one the TKS uh, Heavy, which uh, the frame was designed by Kevin Langlois at TKS. He goes by online. Uh, you'll find him doing a lot of different designs and flying. He's quite a freestyle pilot. Uh, so one has got a traditional all-in-one where the, the receiver, the VTX, the flight controller, the ESC, the OSD, they're all on one single board. And then I've got a Caddx Ant in there as well. I think it's uh, it's actually the Ant Light, so no screw holes. And then the uh, newbie drone canopy here with some 1102 10,000 kV motors. And this one weighs just about 35 grams. Now my TKS Heavy build has got a separate VTX. It's got a heavier camera, although it's still a pretty light camera for the image quality. It's the Baby Rattel 2 from Caddx, uh, and it's got a, a Mobula uh, canopy. Now, some people are having troubles breaking these, but I think I've only broken like two, and that's including all my whoops. So you may not want to use this canopy. I haven't really had much trouble, but so something to consider. Uh, so the all-in-one in this one obviously does not have a VTX. So it's got the flight controller, ESC, and the receiver on it. I uh, still have motor connectors on there. I've got a little bit of battery pad at the bottom to make sure my batteries stick around. Uh, I've got uh, rubber bands that I bought from AliExpress to secure the battery to it. And of course, we're using some screws and uh, the same sort of props, I guess. I didn't mention that. The props on this one are screwed on, which makes it a little bit heavier. And before I forget to mention, the weight of this heavier build is nearly uh, 41 and a half grams. So we've got nearly a six and a half gram difference between these two quads. What we're going to do first is I'm just going to show a sample. This is not about uh, the efficiency that you gain or lose with weight uh, because I'm flying different batteries. They're the same size of battery, but they're different batteries. So, you know, some batteries you can have are the same brand, same milliamp hour, same all these things, and they can perform different within a batch. Many of us experience that. So don't make too much out of it. Of course, when your weight goes down, you should gain some flight time. You should gain some agility, but you lose what we would oftentimes call huckability. So when you have a heavier quad, maybe you want to full throttle it up and over something and it kind of carry itself, you know, kind of like when I do the punch outs over the house, you might call that huckability. Uh, you could also do it in a power loop fashion where you could float backwards at zero throttle. Uh, more weight helps us with that. And that's why... I say that it isn't necessarily all about weight because you might enjoy those extra grams versus myself. I, I want the grams to go away. So let's start taking a look at these flights. So obviously we're going back in time a ways too. This was actually some footage I did quite a while ago and then kind of uh, <laughs> forgot about it. Whoops, sorry about that. Uh, so the sod isn't in. Um, what the, the area, the outdoor living space is, uh, we're calling it the uh, cabana, it seems to make sense, um, is not finished, which it is all finished now. And the swing set is still there. And yeah, like you, I miss the swing set. Um, unfortunately, we're just going to have to bear through, you know, the next few winter months as we get into winter. Uh, I think next spring we've got some additional plans. Not big projects, but just little things to kind of enhance the backyard that I think may make for some interesting flying uh, areas as well. The swing set won't be coming back. The kids are old enough to where they're not really interested in stuff like that anymore. Uh, so we'll probably, you know, have something else out the, out in the yard to kind of make things nicer, livable out there. Uh, so these two flights come on the same day, uh, and you'll notice that via the landscape and the projects are all in the same state on both the flights. But I wanted to take a look at this flight. This is the the lighter version, if I didn't say that already. So you could get a feel for. Just it, what it is very specific to how I fly them. Of course, when I'm flying something that's heavier weight, I think I change a little bit of how I'm flying. I'm do the same basic things, 
but I think the way I go about it is probably a little bit differently. So that's kind of my flight style or flight bias that you do have to account for. I, again, I wouldn't pay too much attention to the battery spec and the flight time stuff. Uh, you can draw your conclusions from that if you want to, but I wouldn't put a lot of weight in that. Uh, generally speaking, again, less weight, longer flight time. It's just, you know, you're carrying less load, just like with runners, you know, you don't see 300 pound um, sprinters or um, endurance runners or racers that uh, weigh all that much. They're very light, so it makes it much more easy to carry that weight, and the same can go, can be said for our quads. But we've looked at about two minutes of the light. Let's jump over the TK Heavy build, which again, that's 41 and a half grams. I just noticed something. My OSD is a little bit different, and I've got the line a little bit higher. Although I've got all the elements in the spot that I typically have them, it's just a bit higher. Now, obviously, one of the big things you can tell with this is not only with, you know, kind of how I'm flying it due to the weight, potentially, but also the image quality. And that's kind of the larger point, because if you are, if you like flying HD, whether it's Walk Snail, HD Zero, DJI, uh, Run Cam Link, I guess I think we're going to be calling it now. We're not going to be saying Vista much longer, I think, as that wears off of our uh, vernacular. Uh, you might want to fly a micro, something small, something light, something that's relatively quiet, but still gives you good performance, but it's really hard to break away from those HD options that we have now. Well, this is a much better camera than the Caddx Ant. The Caddx Ant is a good camera for its weight. Uh, this camera comes in about two grams heavier, but the image quality is quite good. Uh, I, I would say that most of us for analog would be pretty happy with this. Of course, you might like the Foxeer uh, Toothless 2 Nano. Uh, that might be, uh, it's another really good camera. It does come in a couple of grams heavier. Um, but again, we've got our flight here, and I'm going to give you a, a sample of that as we're watching it. And we'll do a side-by-side, -side, but there won't be any flight audio. For those that aren't familiar with the, the TKS or the Race Rocket um, that's from Jack's 3D Printing, this has been, I don't know if it's been a, more than... It's been a two years now, maybe? I need to go back and look, but it's been close to two years to where this is my favorite quad. It's my favorite because it's small, it's my favorite because of how it flies, and those combinations, I really enjoy. Now, I do need to build one with HD Zero yet. I, I have plans on that, I just haven't gotten around to it. Um, actually, I think I'm gonna have to buy some more components because I really don't like taking working quads apart to make changes. Most of the time, I end up giving working quads away, and I'll make new quads. One of the benefits of being on this side of the camera and um, everything that uh, th this channel creates is just more fun for YouTube purposes or FPV purposes. Is that you know, I'll be, I just buy stuff to make more stuff and then it eventually goes into the FPV population. So we're, we've got a little bit over two minutes of this flight as well. Let's move ahead forward to our side-by-side -side comparison. This will not have flight audio though. All right, we're going to take off here in a minute, and I synchronized these two flights uh, by the arming status. So they're pretty close within a couple of frames of each other, either, even though I don't necessarily take off at the same time. And I'm not trying to fly the exact same fat path. So it's going to make for, I would acknowledge, a little bit of difficult viewing and comparison, but I'm hopeful that you, you can potentially draw some conclusions about your flight style that you enjoy and the difference that's you know six and a half grams makes on a micro quad now you, you could say well i'm gonna do a three incher and it will have less of an impact and i would completely agree with that this is fairly specific to this kind of weight category as well as this prop size so when you start to get into 50 plus grams or you know uh, it, you get into prop sizes that are bigger you know the number of grams and the difference between a light and a heavy build may not have as much of a significant impact as when you go smaller in prop size and lower in weight. I think one thing this definitely does is it shows the image quality difference. Because again, this is on the same day and you could do the comparison and with all the construction that we've had going on in the backyard, it gives us a pretty good idea of the status and uh, doesn't allow me to fool you as far as when the flights were. This was this was back quite a while ago. Matter of fact, today I just uh, got done mowing uh, the yard again. Took a, I was using my little Tick Watch 3 to keep track and it was a little over 12,000 steps to mow the front and the backyard. I didn't do any edging, just general trimming. And I did bag everything, of course, with the sod. Uh, we want to make sure that we get all the grass clippings up off the grass and throw that stuff away until it gets a good foothold. And it, the sod's doing very, very well. We have a couple of spots that didn't take. 
bound to happen with all that. But for the most part, very pleased with how the side came out. Water bill was extraordinary. Um, but uh, yeah, we're lucky to live in an area where we're not suffering from a, a water shortage as though some areas are. So we're, we're again about two minutes in this. I think I'm going to let this play out a little bit, but I'm going to have to come up with a few things to talk about. Let's talk about why I haven't been posting. Um, I, I said it in the beginning of the video, I don't look for reasons to create videos. I, you know, this is my hobby. This is my day job. So usually I create a video because I have a product that I'm working on as far as a review and I've wrapped up the amount of flights that I want to have on a quad uh, before I do the review or I'm testing some other sort of component. And there really hasn't been that much since the uh, Sub 250 Nanofly 16. It, there really just hasn't been anything come across. I've got a couple things I've bought that I've been flying. But what I have been doing is going back and flying some quads that I wanted to fly again that I haven't flown in a long time. Uh, the Hornet HD from Torque FPV, which I don't know if you can even buy it anymore. I noticed that I think you can get the base plate, but you can't buy the kit. Uh, that one's designed around the, the Vista and originally the uh, DJI camera. So I don't know if they're even going to update the design. But originally when I did mine a couple years ago, uh, my computer was so slow at the time that I did not notice that in the recording that there was some jello, so the tuning needed improvement. So I've been working on the tune with that. I've also been flying the uh, Diatone TBS eSheen collaboration, the ER349. Some of you will remember that. Really high quality quad, lots of fun, raw power, uh, good times. I put uh, an Express LRS receiver in, uh, well, not, it's not technically inside, it's attached to the back end. So I could uh, fly with my Zora radio, so I've been enjoying that. And of course, I've been flying the uh, TKS uh, Rocket Race 2S editions uh, around the backyard. Not these flights, of course, but uh, yeah, I have been flying those and, and doing some additional testing with the RCN power motors. Okay, I finally finished up those flights. I've just about worn my lips out. And, you know, the flight times are dramatically different. Of course, there's going to be a little bit difference in the battery and the end of voltage as well. So I hope that that was somewhat useful if you're looking at quads in general, whether it's a bind and fly and the kind of quad that you might want and the type of flight that you might want so that you can make decisions about what's going to fit best for you and your space. I would highly encourage you if you have any inkling of making a micro and especially an analog micro of building one, you know, you could build one with the Cadex Baby Retail and use uh, the traditional uh, all-in-one, like the uh, X12 from Happy Model. It's got a 12 amp ESC, it's got Express LRS, it's got a 400 milliwatt VTX, uh, and a flight controller built all into one. So you could cut some of the grams off of my TKS heavy build and still have that nicer camera in there. So you might want to consider that. What's difficult right now is when I first kind of got hooked on this, you could buy the UR85 from, I think that's uh, UR UAV, kind of an Esheen sort of brand. Um, that whoop, it's a two inch whoop. You could buy that and then put it on this frame and it made for a great flying quad. Unfortunately, you can't buy that anymore. So now you've got to round up the parts all on your own. From your favorite FPV shops. Uh, I'll put a list of the components that I suggest. Uh, you feel free to use whatever you like. Um, I really like the 1102 10,000 kV motors from Happy Model, but I will acknowledge that many people have had troubles with bending motor shafts or just otherwise the durability of the motors. I like them because they perform well, not necessarily because they're the most durable 1102, and they are pretty light. You could also use the RCM Power motors. I've been uh, flying this little guy on Byblades, the RCM Power. I think this is a 14,000 kV, and this has got the X12 uh, Happy Model flight controller in it. Um, again, the Caddx Ant in this particular one. So you could build it a number of different ways, and I think that was something about my original TKS Rocket Race or Race Rocket video that kind of got convoluted was I had several different kind of build categories with the different parts, and it got a little bit overwhelming for some. So I'll try to keep it simple as far as components that you would buy. I'll, I'll recommend a flight controller. I'll recommend two cameras, the light camera and the heavier camera. Um, and then I'll, of course, link Jack uh, 3D print, Jack's 3D printing, uh, where you can get your carbon fiber. You can also get the motor screws from there because you will potentially need slightly longer motor screws in order to be able to mount to the 2S frame because it is a bit thicker for that durability factor. But uh, if you don't go with 1102, 1103 will work, but 1103 in weight 
kind of jumps up, especially when you jump off the happy model motors. They tend to be lighter, but again, less durable than other motors uh, from the reports I'm getting. So something to consider. I hope the video was somewhat useful. Uh, I Sometimes I'll hear about these viewer requested sort of things and they are of interest to me and I think they can be useful for others. So I take the time and I record those. So hopefully you at least enjoy the flight and it gives me an opportunity to say hello to everyone after... 10 days or a little bit more of not posting. But uh, yeah, I've got some other things I'm working on. And, and after the holiday, I'll probably uh, start working on making the videos from those other things that I've been working on. Yes, uh, I've got the Waxnail goggles. I haven't even powered them on. I just got them out of the box the other day. I've had them for, I don't know, I pre-ordered and then they arrived. And I was like, oh yeah, everybody will make videos about it. I'm not in a hurry. Um, so yeah, I've just been enjoying myself and Enjoying the, the final uh, weeks of fall before we get into the dog days of uh, winter when it really hits here. Well, I hope the video was uh, useful. Got a little long-winded tonight. Apologize for that. Um, again, if you want to uh, pursue my favorite micro, I'll have links down in the video description to uh, Jack's 3D Printing where you can get a frame. And I'll have a short list of components that you can buy, whether they're from the linked places or your favorite shop, but with your dollar. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, otherwise, please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate your time. And thanks for watching.